So I'm on hold. And, and when you put on hold any music that's played, there's an underlying frequency that's made to pacify you. Okay? It's there to condition you. So don't focus on it. Focus on something, some other task so your brain doesn't absorb it all. Okay? I'm telling you guys, this Decepticon shit is real. And they're pacifying us when, they're on, when we're on buses underneath the speakers. Okay? They're using this frequency that we can't hear with our ears, but our brain picks up on it. It pacifies us. We're in the shops, the shopping centers, the shopping complex. It pacifies us. It keeps us docile because the fluoride's not working no more. Hello, people. Um, just going to be trying to talk about books um, and how artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence was here already a long time ago. Um, it's just the way we've been taught how to look at what artificial intelligence is. We've it's it's missed it's it's hidden from our eyes. It's very deceptive. It's been in oculation here, but not here. But anyways, um, so let's talk about books over innate knowledge, and I'm going to try and argue the point that technology. Education is our greatest downfall. And it was our greatest downfall from the very get-go. You see, you know, mankind was taught how to use a pen. How to create words, literature, how to express their, their, thought, their thought process on paper. Okay, so they freed up portions of their brain by storing information on paper and then they had, didn't have to re remember it anymore. That was the major downfall. So now, in our modern day and age, we have come to, this is our lifestyle. The first half of our life, we're being untaught what we know. Everything. Okay? For the first 30 years of our life, or even the first 25 years of our life, we're programmed to forget who we are, okay? So then you graduate from, from school, you go on to college or university. Let's just say you want to study the human anatomy and want to get into medical science. You start learning about the human body's functionality, about its anatomy and how it functions. Now, for example, your heart, it's beating by itself. Are you doing it? Yes. Do you know how to do it? No. When you were born, you knew how to do it. You knew how it all worked and how it functioned. But as you got older, more information pushed that away to the back of your mind. And it's like, okay, that, that functionality is still maintaining itself on its own. I don't need to waste any more mental strength on concentrating on that. So you can breathe by yourself. Or you can concentrate and breathe. You can be conscious of your breath. Or you can be unconscious of your breathing. So, all this stuff that your body is doing by itself. Okay? It's doing something so complex all on its own. And you don't know how to do it on a conscious level. But on a subconscious level you do. Did a book tell you how to do that? No. Okay, so all books are, are like a review. Okay, so if you go and what, you look up a review of a movie, okay, you read the review, that's just someone else's interpretation. Sorry, they've just stopped my video again, just to disturb me, put me off my, off my line of thought. So when you, you know, the review, that's someone else's perspective, someone else's interpretation. You watch the movie, you write a similar review, okay, because it's similar, it's the same movie, but it will be your interpretation. Okay, so if someone was to read both those reviews, they'd get two interpretations of the same movie. Okay, it doesn't mean it will be the exact interpretation of the movie, it will be that person's interpretation. Okay, so this is why all spiritual holy men or people that were aspiring for nirvana, for for moksha, for liberation, for divination, for conscious awakening. They isolated themselves. They practiced her hermetism. 
<laughs> yeah, anesthetism, no aesthetics. Okay. Now, why do priests? Uh, why are priests required not to get married in the, in Catholicism? That's another debate altogether, but I'm just using that as an example because it stems from somewhere. You know, the Essenes practiced isolation, isolating themselves from the larger communities at hand. Buddha did the same thing for a very, very long time. You know, I watched a very awesome video by a, another YouTuber called RFG Chosen One. Love your videos, bro. I fucking love your videos. So full of info, it's amazing. Anyways, um, the book was the first computer. Okay, it used to compute things for us on pages, it used to work things out. We started using mathematics. There's no numbers in the universe. I know some people think that you know because of the Fibonacci sequence and all that, but if you look on the pages of life, on leaves. On the branches of trees, there are no physical numbers written. There's a language, that's something that, that either we've created or was passed down to us. Okay, now whoever passed this technology onto us had a very very long foresight and saw that <coughs> <coughs> we'll give them books and computers and external things to rely on, as opposed to relying on their brain which can do all of those things a million times better than whatever they're using that's external to them. And then we forgot. It's like a phone. It's like talking. Talking is a very primitive skill. We used to speak telepathically, but we forgot. It's been turned off in our genetics. This is what DNA activation is. It activates all of this stuff. You see, the Essenes also say that, or Jesus says it in the Gospel of the Essenes, that the Gospel of Peace, it's called, it says, um, you will learn from the pages of life, the small book of life. So, if you've got a keen observation, and you're ready to wake up. Yeah, books can guide you. They're a guidance, so you don't, you know, veer off the wrong track. Like for example, you want to go for a drive. You look up the street directory. Oh, okay. Well, most people use navigators these days on Navmans. Okay, it takes out the manual work of flipping through the pages and using your mind, stimulating it, reading. Okay, keeping your mind active instead of stagnating it and and it's just dying. Okay, you read the street directory, you look at the map, you say, okay, this is where I need to go. You get a general idea, so you don't veer too far off the track. Okay, and then you just, you wing it. You just wing it. You already got a general idea of which direction you need to go. You're not going to veer off too far. And then you just go yourself. Sightseeing. If you want to go sightseeing, do you jump on a highway and just keep driving down that highway because it's just the safest alternative route and it's got all signs and you know where you're going? There's no experience. There's no adventure. There's nothing to learn from. There's nothing to stimulate your mind. It's all secure, safe, and predetermined. All variables are predetermined. So your mind doesn't have to work. It's comfortable. It's secure. And that's how the human mind works. It's lethargic mind. This lethargic devil within our mind prohibits us from progressing. Like a simple understanding of evolution. You come out of water, you're onto land, you start walking around. What happens? Water, land, air. Water, land, air. We've been stagnated on the land for a very, very long time. Keep looking down on the ground. That's why we're staying on the ground. When fish look in the ocean, they stay in the ocean. When fish look out of the sea, they jump out of the sea. They look at a bird flying above the shore, they jump out and grab that bird. If their eyes are just in the ocean, they'll be hunting things just in the ocean and never come out of that water. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's pretty much what's happening to us. Books are amazing, stimulate the human mind. 
okay? But that's curriculum teaching. That's total left brain thinking. We have the innate understanding of the universe. We are, we are the universe. We are God. And I'm not talking about the gods, the Elohim, like I did in my last video. I'm saying the essence within us is the essence that, of God. It is the all-knowing. We're just being taught from as soon as we come through that gateway, when we're born out of the womb, yeah, we come down that canal, we're taught not to do anything that we know how to do from day one. You cry, you get picked up and you get shook. Stop crying. Stop making noise. You're not supposed to be doing that. Why are you doing that? You're moving around. Why are you moving around? Stop moving around for. Keep the blanket on top of you. Stop getting cold. You're going to get sore stomach. You're going to get sick. We're programmed. We're programmed from the very get-go to control a human being the second it takes its first breath out of the womb. Start the conditioning just straight away. Delete that godness from that human. Delete the all-knowing from that human. We are remarkable creatures. We do things that we don't even know that we can do. And then you want me to go, or you want humans to, under, to, to believe that you go to a university to learn about the universe. We are the universe. And we're a part of the multiverse. Each one of us is a verse of a hymn. Each one of us is a verse of an Elohim. The uni one verse. Part of the multiverses. So, again, don't get hung up on books. And don't even get hung up on what I say or what other people say. Hear, hear what people say, hear what I say, and you've got unlimited access to the internet, make the use of it, because, you know, we are in a day of information, and the powers that be are working overtime to take those away, but it's been around for so long now, I just have to say that if it's taken away from the general public, this, this access to free information, <coughs> because we are consciously waking up and the poles are shifting, and things are just happening, okay, and I'm not saying it to, to be a, I know, a positive, uh, optimistic person. No, I'm being realistic, okay? When they take this stuff away, we're going to go back to using the brain part of our abilities and, re and just substitute what they've taken away with what we can naturally do. And the, the reason why I've known this is because I've been forced, because I'm not going to give up. My mind just doesn't want to give up. And I know that I'm, a, I'm in a position that, how can I do anything? Okay? But through my will and drive, I have ma managed to extract information from nowhere. Just, boom. Underneath the sunlight, boom. Because I want it. Because I want it. When you yearn, you churn, you churn your guts, you churn everything. You, it spools up and vibrates the energy inside you more. Okay, and it projects it out into the universe like a lighthouse. And that attracts other light. Information. Naturally. Okay, it's like the human brain. Okay, and how it reacts to the targeting program. They target you with certain amount of colors. For example, red. Red is a very prominent color. Okay? Red. It's just very prominent. It's always been around for a very long time. Your mind's programmed, sensitized to notice red. Because that's what you're focusing on. And then you start noticing the reds everywhere. And you think it's all part of the program. Turn your mind's direction around, its momentum and that energy, and pro project it to a beneficial source. Okay? Okay? Project that to a beneficial source. It's energy. So, I'm just trying to remember. Um, I believe atoms also um, absorb energy. I can't remember what it's called. And then they can, they can hold it and they can discharge that energy. And we can do the same thing, which is why they've got the old um, 
evil eye from the Mediterranean and also the Turks are very um, well known for having this evil eye. It's blue with an eye. So I wonder why it's a blue, you know, it symbolizes the blue. But um, yeah, this, this evil eye wards off sort of jealousy and curses from other people. And this jealousy and curses is just energy projected through the eyes. That's why you got that evil eye, which wards off other evil eyes. Anyways, folks. So yeah, anyways, folks. Um, the artificial intelligence is anything external to your brain. It makes it artificial. Anything external to your body is artificial. And we all know that a computer... A PC, okay, is, an, is, a, is it? it's an extension of the human brain. So it's just mimicking what the human brain can do. So don't get caught up for AI, this advanced algorithm shit, because algorithm comes from algebra, algebra, okay? That's where that term comes from. And uh, the Arabs were responsible for for working out algebra. Where'd that come from? You see? Had to get our brains already artificial, thinking artificially, to get us ready for the system that's going to be controlled by a totally external artificial intelligence on a much higher grade. Okay? So, this device that I'm using to record this video on is artificial. It's an artificial intelligence. It's intelligent. It's programmed to function in a way. It's an intelligence. It doesn't Just because it doesn't think for itself, it doesn't mean that it's not artificial intelligence because it still does some thinking for itself. You turn on the button and all the programs and software start running by itself. You don't activate it manually. It's an artificial intelligence. So watch out for these Decepticon deceptive lies, cherubim lies, alright? Don't fall for this sodomite shit, wake up to yourselves. I'm waking up, I'm saying things for what they are. You know, Jesus said, when you know the truth, you will marvel and you will rule over all. And this is written in um, the Gospel of Thomas, and it's not like a physical rule like what the human brain thinks of. It's not a power thing. Right, look it up. If you don't blame me, it does say that. 